الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم فملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم للشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكما للنبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم العجم قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أدع إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين اللهم اجعلنا من المهتدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين ثم ما بعد There is a uh, an usul in balagha in speech, in rhetoric, in Arabic that goes along the lines of خير الكلام ما قل ودل The best of speech is that which is short and gets the point across We also hear in English, right? Short and sweet. Short, sweet and to the point. So in Arabic rhetoric there is this same usul and obviously who is a better speaker, who is a better um, knower of rhetoric than Allah Himself. In this ayah that I recited in Surah Nahal, Allah summarizes the entirety of what it means to give da'wah. And inshallah I'll, I'll try my best to break down each word by each word and what we can learn from that because obviously every word is in its place and you know we'll get however far we get. Alhamdulillah, actually I saw that I got 15 minutes today as opposed to the usual 10. So inshallah I'll get a little further than I normally do. Um, he starts with, Allah starts with the word ud'u. There are many words for giving inv invitation. Allah decided in His wisdom to use the word ud'u, to give da'wah. And what does it mean to give da'wah? You know, so it's very similar to the word we have in Urdu, right? Dawad dina. When you give someone da'wah, when you invite someone to your home to eat, to hang out, whatever it is, when you give that da'wah, that person who you're giving da'wah to knows that when I come to this person's house, I am going to be safe. These, these people aren't going to uh, insult me. These people are not going to say bad things about me. These people are not going to, you know, start, as soon as I sit down, instead of, instead of serving me food, they're going to say, you have this problem, you have that problem, you need to fix this about yourself, this is so bad about you, how dare you're this way, how dare you're that way. They are not going to do that. Because when you give da'wah, when you invite someone to your home, you're giving them ikram. You're giving them honor. When you invite them to your home, you are promising that I'm going to bring you into my home and I'm going to make sure you are respected. I'm going to make sure that we treat you right because you are our guest. So in the same way, when we give da'wah in the path of Allah, we are supposed to be gentle. We are supposed to be kind. We are supposed to be humble to the people we give da'wah to. We're not supposed to, you know, today we live in cancel culture. You have to, all you have to do is open up YouTube and you can just put someone on blast. Like they have this problem, they have that problem, they have that problem. This, this group is this way, this firqa is wajib al-qatal, this firqa has this problem, this person is, you know, doing kufr because of XYZ. This is not da'wah. This is something else, but it's not da'wah. Because da'wah is given with humility. Da'wah is given with the promise of I'm not going to insult you. And this is captured in when Allah says, Udru. Another thing of, that we learn from the word udru is when you give da'wah to someone, you don't give it to a stranger. You give da'wah to people you know. Right? No one's going to accept your invitation. No one's going to accept the invitation of a rando walking down the street. You have to know this person. You have to get to know this person. You get to know who each, who each other is, who, what, their, what your likes are, what your dislikes are. So when we give da'wah, we also have to be of those who are kind in our community respected in our community, not those people who you know, go, down the, go down the street and judge this person and judge that person and make, uh, make you know, messed up comments about X, Y, Z. We don't do that. We are known to be good people, kind people, gentle people, because that is when someone will accept your da'wah, that is when someone will come to your house. Not when they know that you, you know, this, this person is not, he doesn't respect his guests, he gives us bad food, all this, that, the other thing. So it is important to, when we want to give da'wah, we have to be those who are gentle and known in our community as those who are gentle and kind and forgiving. And then Allah says, Udru ila sabil. What are, you going, what are you going to give da'wah to? You are going to give da'wah to a sabil. Sabil is the word, one of the words for a path. 
It's important Allah did not say you're going to call to an, a manzil. There's a huge difference, uh, uh, skies and earth between sabil, path and manzil, a destination. You and I don't call to a manzil. We call to a sabil, we call to a path. What are the implications of this? One of them is, when you call to a path, you are admitting, you are recognizing that I am also on this path. I am also still walking the same path that I am calling you to. I'm not a finished product. I'm not the one who's, you know, sitting back, you know, I did all everything I need to do, I'm all set, you need to catch up. Jalo jaldi karo, where you need to get to where I'm getting, you need to get to where I'm at. No, when we call to a path, I'm walking this path with you as well. Because we don't get to, we don't get to say that we're guided, we don't get to own guidance. Allah says, Allah compares in the Quran guidance to water. No one gets to say, Alhamdulillah, you know, two years ago I had a glass of water, it was nice, it was refreshing, it was nice and cold drink of water, I'm good. No one says that. Every few hours the thirst comes back. Every few hours you need to replenish. In the same way, we don't get to keep guidance in our back pocket. That Alhamdulillah, we had one event of guidance, we started doing something good and now we're set. Alhamdulillah, you know, I got an express, t express ticket to Jannah. It doesn't work like that. Every few hours the thirst comes back. We need to ask Allah for guidance, which is why every single salah, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Every single rak'ah, we're asking for guidance. Every single rak'ah. We don't get to own it. We don't get to say that we have it, you need it. That I have it now and I'm going to start, you know, handing it out to people because you need to get to where I am. It doesn't matter if you're in the crowd. It doesn't matter if you're standing up here where I am. It doesn't matter if you're the two people to my left. No one gets to own guidance. We all need guidance. No one gets to say, I'm better than you. No one gets to say, you need to get to my level. Because we are all on this sabil. And the fact that Prophet would himself would say, Usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah. I counsel you and I also counsel myself to the taqwa of Allah. I am counseling myself to fear Allah as well. Allah in, Allah in the Quran says, um, He says, guard, protect yourself and then your family from the fire of Jahannam. First yourself, you have to take care of yourself too. You and I never get to say we're finished products. You and I never get to say, oh we have guidance, alhamdulillah we're good to go. And now everyone else needs to get where we are. So there is a sense of humility that comes when we call to the path. And Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ Who is better than one, again, who calls to Allah, but وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا He also himself does good deeds as well. He doesn't get a day off. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he says, I myself am from among those who are Muslim. I'm not above them. I'm not calling to them. When I'm giving advice, I'm also advising myself. I myself am among the people I'm calling. I'm, we are all equals. No one gets to say there, I'm better than someone because I have the opportunity to give da'wah. One of the other implications of the word sabil is if there's a huge, I want to, you know, Allah paints pictures in our mind, right? Because the Arabs, all they had to stare at was the desert and the sky. So they made very, they had, they were very good at imagery. So Allah paints pictures in our minds when he, when he gives words in the Quran. And the word sabil, again, a path, I want you to imagine a huge path. Literally in front of you there is a path. And people are, there are people walking on it. There are people who are on bicycles, there are people who are on, who are on motorcycles, there are people who are on, in cars, there are people who are in trucks, in buses, people are walking along the side, people are jogging, some people are you know, taking their time, some people are walking quickly, some people are running, some people are speeding. All these people are walking on this path. And you and I have also been walking on this path and we, alhamdulillah, we get to a certain mile marker, right? On the highways you have mile markers, right? So we get to a mile marker. And we're at a certain mile marker, some people are ahead of us, some people are behind us. And we're all on this path. And again, the manzil, don't worry about the manzil. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. We ask for guidance to the path. We're walking on this path, we're good. The manzil we will get after we die, inshallah, in, in the, from, from Allah Himself. So we are on this path. And we have reached a certain mile marker. And now, there are people who aren't on this path or who are on this path and are a little behind us. Or people who are you know, just getting on the entrance ramp to get on this path. And now you and I get concerned that I want this person to also be on this path. You and I can't expect someone to, just because we started them on this path, to be at the same place that I, we are on this path. Everyone goes at a different place. Everyone comes from a different place. We also cannot expect someone to go at the same speed on this path that we are going on. Because everyone, again, Allah has given everyone a different, uh, uh, everyone a different capability, everyone a different ability. Some people are going to run, some people are going to walk, 
Some people are going to jog. Everyone goes at a different pace. If I, uh, you know, if a mother starts praying, you know, before she wasn't praying, and now she starts praying, and now she realizes that Alhamdulillah, I'm praying, and now she wants her kids to pray, and then she just starts giving, uh, just yelling at them, namaz paro, namaz paro, pray, pray, pray. If she keeps doing that and doesn't work with them gently, what's going to happen? Those kids are not going to pray. They're kids, right? They're not, they're not where they need to be yet. This is what, this is what happens when you, do, when you don't do, udu'u ila sabil. You recognize everyone has a different pace. Everyone works at a different capability. Our job is to get them on the path, and inshallah, they will continue on the path. I'm reminded of a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. Someone came to the Prophet Wasallam and he said, uba'yu'uka ala salatain. I'm, will, I'm, I'm going to do bayraf to you, meaning I'm going to accept Islam, but ala salatain, I'm only going to pray two salah. I'm only going to pray two. How many are there? Five. I'm only going to pray two. Not even half. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't say anything to him. He happily accepted his Islam, sent him on his way. The Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, were confused. Ya, ya Rasul, what happened? Is there some sort of discount program? You know, can we get in on this? The Prophet ﷺ said, no. He's going to taste the sweetness of salah. He'll pray five himself. He started with two. He'll taste the sweetness of salah. He'll start on this path. He'll get on this sabil. And he'll pray five once he, once he learns the laz, once he, once he tastes the lazza of salah, he'll pray himself. We don't need to force people. This is the humility and the, the grace with which the Prophet ﷺ invited. This is udur ila sabil, inviting to a path where everyone works at their own pace. And, you know, one, uh, recently for the past few months, I've been contemplating uh, the attacks of shaitan. You know, in, in, in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah gives a, does us a favor and tells us about the attacks of shaitan. Shaitan says, I'm certainly going to come at them from the front, right in front of them. From behind them. From their right. From their left. So he, he, Allah describes these attacks and inshallah, I mean, you could, we could talk for hours on what these attacks are. I'm just going to talk about one attack from the right is actually this attack of when we give guidance because the attacks of the right are those, if you want to summarize, where we think we're doing something good, we do think we're doing something for the cause of Allah, and in fact, shaitan has made, turned our deeds sour. So one of the ways we do this is, like I was saying before, we give da'wah, and we have this idea that we're better than everyone else. That we have guidance, and that everyone else needs to catch up. Everyone else needs to get our, at our level. This is actually an attack of shaitan when we, when we, when we invite with this mentality. I mean, as the previous speaker said, uh, Dr. Faisal and Imam Khurram Shahzad, they talked about how in Hajj, everyone's equal. No one gets to say, I have more guidance. And the awliya of Allah, they were people who were humble. They never thought that they were better than others. They were always those who were humble and gave advice as best as they could. And when they, when they received advice, they were willing to take it. One of the other attacks of shaitan is, he makes you think that because I'm standing up here, I give advice, I never receive advice. I'm above advice. This is also an attack of shaitan. Everyone is on this path. Everyone needs advice. I'm running out of time. I mean, there is a whole less rest of the ayah to go. Uh, inshallah, down the line, I can talk about you know what it means. Allah gives us three examples of how to give guidance: bil hikmah, wal al hasana, wa jadilhum bil ahsan. And then He gives uh, a concluding uh, uh, phrase as well. Uh, we'll sh- cut it short because you know I want to respect other people's time. May Allah make us of those who give da'wah in the right way. May Allah make us of those who are capable of inviting people to Islam. May Allah make us of those who recognize what it means to be on a sabil, to be on a path, and make us of those who are willing to give and receive advice as well. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha fa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'il al-Muslimin fa astaghfiruhu. Innahu huwa al-Ghafur rahim